Speaking of players declaring for the draft based on good bowl performances, uh, who, who, who from Vanderbilt is, is declared? They all just declared for the transfer portal and left. They didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Doug the Buckeye told me to say that, okay? <laughs> Doug right now is watching going, that was good, that was good. <laughs> it's time for the Brew and Shaver Sports Podcast. Hey there, welcome back sports fans. Hope you are enjoying bowl season in this brand new year. That's right. And what a way to start off the new year, Dare. Those Ooh, games on Monday were amazing. Yes. I don't know I don't know about you. We started off with the LSU Wisconsin game, a great game, and then we moved to the two playoff games. Wow, what a day for college football. Yep. Absolutely. You know, I heard somebody say on a podcast earlier in the week, earlier last week, that um that their, their team wasn't in the game, so I didn't really care who won. Uh, all they wanted is for especially New Year's Day's game, day, New Year's Day games to be good games. That was really all they cared about. For the most part, I mean, there were a couple of stinkers, but for the most part, I, I think people got what they were looking for. There were some really, really good games. Yeah, the only thing that could have made it better is the Pop Tarts mascot. That's and right. That would have been the ice, literally the icing on the cake. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Although it was a little morbid. I mean, it was great. He was dancing with security guards. He was having a good time. The whole thing is sacrificing himself. <laughs> I, I, I'm just not sure about that. Going into the toaster, that was a little creepy. It was a bit much, a bit dramatic for a pop tart. But hey, whatever. I guess. <laughs> Evidently, it was received very well. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> so, organizers of the Independence Bowl, are you listening? Are you yeah. watching this? <laughs> we need a, something like the Pop Tart, maybe like a giant crawfish walking around. I, 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 don't I was going to say meat pie. That way, it could be baked on the spot. You know, that's original Louisiana thing. Maybe that's just, right. A meat a meat pie mascot. There you go. Mm. Just a thought. Yeah, that is that's interesting, Darren. Just a thought. Well, thank you for coming back and joining us in 2024. Are you used to saying that yet? It takes a little while. That's exactly right. I'd say, how many times have you written the wrong year on your check? But does anybody write checks anymore? I don't think people do. I don't remember the last time I wrote one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we also want to thank everybody for, for participating in our Bowl Mania oh, yeah, Challenge. Absolutely. We had a great turnout of folks who were involved in that and in a wonderful, wonderful contest. And so, Darren, we, we do, do we need to say anything else about that? I believe we need to acknowledge our Bowl Mania champion. Well, oh! Hello. <laughs> 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 oh, I have a speech prepared. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank no, I, just... I was waiting for you to I pull want... the big long scroll out of here. <laughs> I want to thank Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar for inspiring me <laughs> to make the picks that I did. And we would really love your sponsorship. <laughs> See, I guess that's why I didn't win. I'm going with Brookshire's Water. I guess that's why I didn't. <laughs> Does that, is that water named after a battery? Out, it, it's, it's alkaline. It's uh, purified water with electrolytes. And by the way, Brookshire's, we didn't mean that. If you want to sponsor us, we love you too. Like we do, Dr. <laughs> Pepper. <Just>, uh... <laughs> oh. Well, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And I'm, I'm just happy I beat Zach. That's right. You did beat Zach. But Zach didn't do his typical we'll just leave it at that is that we won't be mean well, <laughs> <laughs> well not that we can find headlines any bigger than the bowl mania champion i think it's we a have a few that we need to talk about anyway yeah. uh, dallas turner the defensive end from alabama has declared for the nfl draft so insurance premiums on all quarterbacks in the nfl have just <laughs> skyrocketed I was about to say, why does that name ring a bell? He really, oh, I didn't mean to say ring a bell. That's my bad. That's my Yeah. <laughs> for for Jaden Daniels, it, it rings like two or three bells. Yeah. It really rung the bell. <laughs> Defensive lineman from LSU, Mecky Wingo, who's been injured quite a bit, but was wearing the coveted number 18 jersey mm -hmm. for the Tigers. 
uh, came back to play in the bowl game. Uh, I thought that was a beautiful awesome. statement on his part, Absolutely. Uh, registering two sacks in the game in his first game back from injury. He has also declared for the NFL draft, along with fellow teammate Brian Thomas, outstanding receiver. I think he led the uh, NCAA in touchdown mm-hmm. receptions. Mm-hmm. That will also be taking his talents to the NFL. So some big-name players who are, who are making the moves up to the next level. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's just now that we're through this part of, you know, two of the four teams that were in the playoff have been eliminated. Obviously, we'll see some transfer portal stuff and some of that stuff will happen. But I'm assuming, especially with the the level, the tier of teams that were in those New Year's Eve and New Year's Day bowls, it, it'll be it'll be a pretty repetitive process of, Oh, this person is now declared for the draft, and this person is now. But I'm assuming we're going to see quite a bit more of that, even more than we did before. That led up to some of the opt outs. I think we're going to see some, even some more people that that I think there's the potential that we see some people that had really good bowl games that pro- may not have been going to declare for the draft that are going to get some really good NFL feedback and probably will end up doing so within the next. I would say week to 10 days. I probably might be even be some names that surprise us a little bit, truthfully. Speaking of players declaring for the draft based on good bowl performances, uh, who, who, who from Vanderbilt is, is declared? They all just declared for the transfer portal and left. <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> Sorry, Doug, the Buckeye told me to say that. Okay. <laughs> Doug right now is watching going, that was good. That was good. <laughs> I'm not a very benevolent winner, am I? <laughs> I understand completely. <laughs> <laughs> we so the <laughs> you threw yourself off with that one. That's pretty good. <laughs> well, <laughs> we've got one more headline, Darren. Okay. A little no, Curtis blow. Nice. That's right. That is right. Conference play is starting. The NCAA right. men's and women's basketball is in full full bloom. That doesn't sound right in January. No. Nothing blooms in January. Um, full, not full circle. That's not right either. What are we trying to say here? Full throttle. What about full throttle? Does that... Well, well, that might work. That might work. I will go with that. Sure. <laughs> sounds sounds like a video game, but we'll go with that. Yeah, whatever. Exactly. Full yeah. swing. Full. Full anyway. swing. There's there it is right there. I think it's full what swing. we're looking for. Mm-hmm. Full swing. So we're, so before you know it, before you know it, Darren, March Madness is going to be here. Oh, I mean, if you think about it, seriously, we're. I mean, what are we? Ten weeks from tournament somewhere in that neighborhood. Ten mm-hmm. ten to. 10 to 12 weeks ish from tournament uh, play starting uh, from mm-hmm. conference tournament play starting. Yeah. I mean, we are, we are right there. And in addition to the, to talking about March madness, Darren, one of your favorite things is coming back spring football. The, was it now the UFL? It is now the UFL. We have not throughout all of that process. Uh, we have not talked about it, but the two, uh, spring leagues have merged the USFL and the XFL, and there is now a uh, partnership between the XFL and their uh, media partner, who is ESPN, and the USFL and their media partner, who is Fox, who was also part owner of the league. And it is now the United Football League, and they announced on uh, the first uh, during game day uh, that there is going to be two divisions, the USFL division or conference, I think maybe it's called eight teams, two conferences, the USFL conference and the XFL conference. Um, And those two, there will be round robin play. They didn't put a schedule out or anything. They really just wanted to get the teams out there of, of specific interest to us is the fact that the Arlington team is coming back. And actually, a uh, 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 specific interest to us is the Arlington team is coming back. The Houston team is coming back. The San Antonio team is coming back. But, you know, I don't think it hit me till right now when we're talking about it. I don't remember seeing the New Orleans team. 
I don't remember that either. I, I don't think the New Orleans team is coming back, which I find very interesting that you would center everything the way they have and have DC and you know basically everything west except for the one eye liar, liar of Michigan and not have a market like New Orleans. So that's that's kind of an odd thing. But so uh, St. Louis, uh, Birmingham, DC, Michigan. Yeah, I, I don't I don't remember the New Orleans team being being mentioned. We'll we'll confirm that uh, on our our Twitter. We'll put out who the eight teams are. We'll do that at one point this week. Uh, but they are going to be back. First week is going to be March 30th. So that is one thing that the XFL followed the USFL league uh, uh, on. They I guess they decided in the merger to push to that March date instead of the XFL was like the very next Sunday. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah. So I think they probably looked at it and decided that that kind of worked well and scheduled a little bit better. So it'll be interesting to see how the combination of these two leagues work out. It'll be fun to watch. Um, it's a shame not everybody got to keep their teams, but still, it, it'll be fun to watch. And it's spring football, and that's what matters most. So, <laughs> And there's a rumor out there that during one of the games at halftime, they're going to sh- shoot a 15-minute movie, short movie version of the latest Fast and Furious segment. <laughs> <laughs> it no. wouldn't surprise me. Vin Dis- Diesel comes swinging in, or something. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. Oh, and by the way, that'd be pretty cool, though. Just for confirmation purposes, March thirteenth. Just throwing is that out there. The um, is the release of that? No, uh, March thirteenth is the SEC basketball tournament. So we're a little more. We're a little more than twelve weeks. We're about at, at fourteen weeks till conference tournament play. But still. We're getting really, really, really close. All right. Well, speaking of getting really, really close, let's get in our time machine and go back in time for this week in sports history. The Rose Bowl game takes place between number one USC and number two Texas and was arguably the greatest national championship game ever played. It featured two undefeated teams, two Heisman Trophy winners, USC's Reggie Bush and Matt Leiner, and one Heisman runner-up, Texas's Vince Young, and a total of 79 points. USC led 38-33 with two minutes left and faced 4th and 2 at Texas's 45-yard line. USC coach Pete Carroll decided to go for it and handed off the ball to Lindale White, who was stopped short by the Texas defense. Texas then took over at their own 44-yard line with 149 left in no timeout. Young led Texas down the field, setting up a 4th and 5 at USC's 9-yard line with 26 seconds left. Young dropped back to pass, but saw an opening to his right and took off running. He sprinted past USC defenders and dove into the end zone for a touchdown giving Texas a 39-38 lead with 19 seconds left. The USC could not score in their final possession, and Texas won its fourth national title and ended USC's 34-game winning streak. Oh, thank you. As we mentioned at the beginning of the show, Darren, Monday was a great slate of games. Absolutely. Uh, to start the new year off at, you know, Tennessee destroying Iowa. Yeah. It, it's great to see an SEC team win. Yeah. We really. didn't have to, we, we didn't have to listen to James Franklin complain about the officiating in a, in a yet another <laughs> loss against a top 10 team. Oh, wait. <laughs> And in the Rely Quest Bowl, LSU squeaked out a victory against Wisconsin. Again, major defensive issues on yeah. LSU's part. That was the eighth time the defense has given up 30 points or more. But Nussmeyer, the heir apparent to, to Jaden Daniels, came in through for almost 400 yards. It looked very sharp. And congratulations to Malik Neighbors for setting the LSU receiving record, eclipsing Absolutely. the great Josh Reed. So congratulations to Malik Neighbors. But let's talk about the two playoff games because – 
that those were the games that probably everybody was watching. Absolutely. Started off in the Rose Bowl with Michigan and Alabama. We both had picked Alabama to win. Yeah. Reasonably so, just for the record. <laughs> and they didn't. No, they did not. And that's all I got to say about this game. Well, I want to I want to throw out something that can be spun either way, and we can talk about it in, in either direction and or both. I heard someone on a podcast, not affiliated. It, it was actually um, um, a, just a, an overall college football podcast. Throw out that they had heard through this grapevine, that grapevine, you know how all that stuff is, that the Michigan um, – defense and uh, I know that guy's name like the back of my hand because he was at Vanderbilt uh, the first year that Clark Lee was at Vanderbilt and then he was he went to Michigan to because he used to work with Jim Harbaugh's brother John and I'm just blank right now on his name and there's just nothing I can do about it so Jesse Minter there we go I thought if I delayed long enough it would come to me and it did uh, that he had picked up on uh certain tendencies that Tommy Reese had in not just watching Alabama film, but watching Notre Dame film, that there were certain motions, there were certain things that would happen, for instance, on the final play, when you've got uh, Milro in uh, shotgun and a um, running back to his right, and that running back goes out in motion and leaves a zero backfield that they had defensive audibles that were instantly called because of tendencies of this is going to be a quarterback run. This is going to be a left side a running back run. Cause you'd see a lot of time when the running back would not go in motion when everybody else did and then come over like from the right side to the left side, you would see a double push on, on that right hand side you know, that the, it would be like a twist. The tackle would come around from one. It would go from the like if he was in like a five technique, he would come around to kind of that outside and the linebacker would twist and come in and they would try to confuse those two guys that obviously would have kind of a, a, an assigned block if the if the run was coming in their direction or coming into their gap. And that there were certain audibles that were set up throughout the night that no matter where they were, no matter what defense was called, if they saw certain actions that audible would be called, and that's exactly what happened on the last play. I found that to be interesting. I also will say, if you have other means of knowing what the other team is doing, the same thing might happen. Just throwing it out from both sides is all I'm doing. <laughs> just just wanted to throw that out. <laughs> e <laughs> yeah, I think that's 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 great. And I think history is ultimately going to judge this yep. Michigan team. That's exactly right. Because they received notice of allegations from one investigation mm -hmm. before this bowl game, and we're still waiting on the sign-stealing investigation that exactly. the NCAA is conducting right now. And nobody knows how all this is going to pan out and what punishments will be leveled against Michigan. We, we just don't know. Right. And so I'm going to reserve my commentary. I'm going to let history. Uh, we'll see how all this this plays out. But I think your your point is well taken. It's always it's in the back of everyone's minds. And that that's the problem with when you're accused of cheating and there seems to be evidence, even when you have a great game plan. Mm -hmm. And it is it, as people say, well, that was great coaching. That was, I oh, mean, he, he noticed tendencies. You have that lingering doubt in the back of your mind that says, uh, but oh, yeah, so. exactly. And, and here's the, you know, you saying you're going to reserve judgment. Here's the other thing. Did you notice how little everybody was talking about it? Mm -hmm. And and I don't know the answer. Why? Uh, maybe it is a matter, a simple matter of, we don't know exactly what happened, how it's all going to shake out. So we're just not going to talk about it. Why speculate it? And, you know, I guess run the risk maybe of looking dumb down the road or whatever, which in today's Twitter world or X world is not really a thought people have a whole lot, it seems. But 
I, I find it hard to believe or, or, or to, to comprehend if, if it were any other scenario, any other team, any other coach, that it wouldn't be one of the lead stories. I mean, even take it to the NFL. Can you imagine if an NFL coach, if team qualified for the playoffs and the coach for separate infractions had been off the bench for half of the NFL schedule, it wouldn't be everything that ESPN, NBC, CBS were talking about? I can't imagine it not being, yet for some reason, we just didn't hear a whole lot of conversation about it. And I, I, I just find that I don't know the answer. Like I said, it could be a simple matter of I'm going to reserve my commentary until we know more. That could be it. But it just seems really, really odd to me how little it was talked about. Yeah. And maybe that's something we can ask Doug the Buckeye. That's uh, right. Yeah, that'd be a great idea. Who is who's celebrating a Big Ten team being in the national championship game, but it's not the Big Ten team he was hoping that was going to be in, in this game. Nevertheless, uh, Michigan wins in overtime 27-20, uh, stuffing uh, Alabama's last play, a run up the middle by Jalen mm-hmm. Milrow to uh, secure the win. They will face next Monday in the national championship game the Washington Huskies. So <laughs> Washington. <laughs> who who uh, pulled out a victory, a hard-fought victory, 37-31 against a Texas team that literally had one throw to the end zone with one second left yep. and a chance to win the game and came up a little short. But that 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 turned out to be a terrific game, Darren. Yes, very much so. And and I tell you what, if if you live uh, if you're not a huge, like I'm going to, like you and I, if it's football on its own, we're going to watch it. I mean, we like to talk about SEC, obviously, because that's what we do every single week. But if there's football on, we're going to watch it. It doesn't really matter who's playing. It, it, you know, we're Toledo or Western Michigan, whoever, it doesn't really matter. But if you're not a huge fan like that, and let's say you just watch your team and maybe the conference they play, you know, SEC, Big Ten, ACC, whatever – you may have had your real first introduction to Michael, Michael Penix Jr. last night. And boy, if you didn't already know, he showed why he was a Heisman <laughs> candidate. I mean, because he played a game. He really, the command that he had of everything, uh, to me, the thing that impressed me the most about him was not these moments where you go, uh, he ran, made this big run or this big, how did he do? It was little small things like taking a half step here and changing the, the angle of his arm because he could, he was anticipating a D lineman and where they were coming from. And the little things like that, that you saw him do on the regular that blew my mind the, the most and impressed me the most with him. And I, and I think ultimately, honestly, made the difference in what ended up being a Washington win versus a Texas win. No question about that. Uh, Darren Penix had a, a terrific game yep. played at a very high level. Yes. Now he will be facing a Michigan defense that really came after Milro. What six sacks in the game did they end up with? That, that five uh, in but, the first half. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he was on his heels on the ground a lot in this game. Uh, now they're going to face Penix, a former Big Ten quarterback. Right. Uh, now has had a, who's had a stellar uh, season at Washington. It should be a terrific national championship game. I very much think so. We are big promoters of the SEC, and a streak has ended with the SEC. Four yeah. consecutive national championships, eight consecutive appearances in national championship games. A, an incredible run. Big Ten fans, you have every right to gloat, so go with it. Seize the moment. This is your time. Enjoy it. And the rest of us are just going to hope for a a good game on Monday night. Uh, And and Big Ten fans, seriously, enjoy it. Let us have it. Let all your SEC friends have it. Because starting next year when there's 12 teams and half of them are SEC, you won't have the chance to gloat again. So have at it this year while you can. It's just Penn my, State might, just Penn my State might squeak into that 12-team field if the officiating can ever get worked well, out. Well, if they don't, we know whose fault it is. Isn't, isn't that right, James? Isn't that right? <laughs> I got so cracked up in that game. Lane Kiffin, I felt, was playing games with James Franklin. You remember at the end of the half, 
he he calls a timeout with a, what, like one second right. left or something like that. And everyone's like, what's he doing? Then James Franklin ends up calling a timeout and Kiffin just comes out and hands the ball. I mean, it was, it was brilliant. And I thought, how, how did Franklin take the bait on that? But you know, to me, that's part of the beauty of a, I think it's part of Lane Kiffin's personality. I think he, part of the reason he is so successful on Twitter is because for whatever reason, he can kind of diagnose people's personalities. It has a little bit of perception, maybe that the rest of us don't have and can see what people are kind of kind of going to play to. I, I think he saw James Franklin's reaction coming from a mile away and, and James Franklin had no idea, probably until somebody on his staff told him that, Man, you, we're pretty sure you just got played on national television. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is an accurate correlation. I, I've heard that Will Ferrell, if he starts, if he can make you laugh, he's relentless. Oh, okay. And, and just making you laugh harder and harder and right, harder. Right. He, does, he, doesn't, he doesn't let up at all. And like you said, I, I wonder if Kiffin's the same way when he knows he can see your reaction – well, he's, he's just going all in. I, that would not surprise me at all. I, I think that's probably very accurate. <laughs> Darren, as you look at this national championship game, uh, who, who do you like in this game? Uh, I think I just have to go Washington. I don't, I don't think I can go Michigan. I don't think I can. I mean, not, it doesn't – I don't think it matters to Jim Harbaugh other than he wants to say, I won a national championship. I think that's the drive. I mean, what's the, what's the, the contract extension on the table right now from Michigan is what? $125 million. And it's basically just sitting there. Uh, it, you know, unless you think you might be going somewhere else, I don't care how much money you've made, who leaves $125 million sitting on the table unless you think there's somewhere else that's got more money. And if it is, it's the NFL. He's not going anywhere else in the NCAA, I, it, obviously. Um, so I, I think that could make a difference. And I, I tell you, everything I felt like Jalen Milrow could accomplish and, and was unable to do because of not a lack of talent, but maybe a lack of experience. There were some moments where there were just some things where you could tell he was still a freshman, where you hadn't really seen that in the last few weeks. I think we're not going to see that with Michael Penix Jr. I, so I, I'm going with Washington on this one. How about you? Yeah, I like this Washington team. I, I was a little concerned they were somewhat undersized up front. Is they're mm -hmm. Their all lines going to be put to the test against Michigan. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, what we saw in the Alabama game, regardless of what's going on at Michigan, Blake Corum is is a really good running back, and <laughs> oh, yeah, he's 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 tough to bring down. Yep. He's got that that small size, but those it's obvious he does not skip leg day, Darren. Right, absolutely, <laughs> and the guy's a terrific running back. Washington's defense is going to be put to the test. I'm still not sold on Michigan's passing attack, right? But that running attack is, is something uh, something special. Yeah. On the other hand, you make a great point. Penix and Milrow are not in the same class in no. terms of what, what they can do as quarterbacks. Milrow's a terrific quarterback in terms of uh, he can get out and, and he can run. At times, his passing has looked really good. At times, not so much. Mm -hmm. Penix, though, can do both. And you saw that in the game against Texas. Yeah. He can use his legs when he needs to. He's a smart He's a smart football player. He's seen a lot. He's been around. I, I'm going to go with Washington. I, I like the uh, the Michael Penix story. I like how he's come back from major oh, injuries. Yeah. Absolutely. How it, at one point he was going to walk away from football because of those injuries. And, and now look at this magical season. So uh, I'm going to go with the Huskies just because uh, I like the Penix story. But I also like their mascot better. I mean, yeah. who would you want as a – I'd rather have a husky for a pet than a wolverine. You know, I think that might be the 
the final straw. Well stated. I agree completely. <laughs> I mean, did you see what that Wolverine did to Eddie George on that on that Heisman yeah. commercial? Is that not a fantastic commercial? Well, actually, that whole series of the Heisman House thing, that is so fantastic. That Those make me laugh. And I tell you, to bring it back into the SEC, um, what's the one about, it says something about Florida Man. It's Florida Man wrestles two gators. Yeah. And it, it shows it shows Tim Tebow wrestling the the male and female Florida mascot, mm. and the last thing you hear is him saying, "Seriously, after all we've been through." <laughs> I think yeah. that is so fantastic. Those commercials are so good. <laughs> and I think I think we're in for a a good football game. Yeah, this is something a little different. We would rather see an SEC team there, of course. And we both talked before the show, Darren. If Georgia hadn't slipped up against Alabama, yep. we think Georgia would be playing for another national championship. Absolutely. No doubt. But they're not. And uh, this, at least from where we're sitting right now, a little less than a week out, looks like a terrific game on paper. Yeah. I agree completely. And, 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 you know, if we can't have an SEC team in it, uh, which is what we want, and an SEC champion, which is obviously what we want, then at least like we've talked about, two good semifinal games followed by a good championship game. Let's let's at least have that. That that's that's what we want. If we can't have everything we want, we'll at least take that. Yeah. So I'll be sitting in my chair with a big bowl of Cheez Its. Absolutely. Cause that, that Cheez Its bowl. Do you ever you ever watch that? Mm -hmm. That was the Tennessee Iowa game, yes. right, wasn't it? Yep. The power of advertising i literally got up and i'm like i'm gonna go with some cheez it's we don't ever have cheez it's in the house and then i was immediately questioned why would you bring cheez it's home and i only had one answer well we've talked about the cheez it bowl i guess that's why i don't <laughs> now well, hang on darren why don't you have cheez it's at your house i don't know i think it's just not a I don't know. I'm more of a peanut guy, I think, than I am a cheese it guy. But when the bowl game started and you start hearing about the cheese it bowl, I think I can't help myself, truthfully. I think you're right. And it is just a cheese it thing because I didn't uncontrollably eat Pop Tarts. So I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's just a cheese it thing for whatever reason. <laughs> yeah. Ever since the kids got past the age of nine, we haven't had Pop Tarts in the house. <laughs> exactly. Well, I say exactly. I'm not going to go that far. I'm not going to lie. I do like the occasional pop dart from time to time. <laughs> well, thanks for tuning in for another episode. I'm not sure we accomplished a whole lot here, but <laughs> we had fun and we hope you had fun having exactly. fun with us. We typically record on Tuesdays. This week we didn't because of the national championship game. Darren and I both have full-time jobs. We had to get up and go to work this morning. We had to put in a full day. We don't have all the time to devote to this as someone that, maybe this is their full-time career. So we thank you for being patient with us. Yes. Ne next week, we will also have our episode come out on Wednesday because the national championship games Monday will record on Tuesday. The new episode will drop Wednesday. And then after that, we'll be back in our flow of our, our Tuesday weekly uh, episodes coming out. So thank you for bearing with us. Thank you for being a part of this show. Absolutely. We appreciate you so, so very much. Enjoy that national championship game. But before that game happens, go to our YouTube channel. Yes. Subscribe. Click that subscribe button, please. Yes. Give us comments. Leave us comments, feedback, wh whatever you feel led to do. I'm sure we're going to be hearing from Doug the Buckeye at some point. Guarantee. Who <laughs> obviously is embracing this championship game with no sec teams exactly gee can't wait to hear from him he may have a couple of things i'm waiting with bated breath until next week y'all take care have a great week thank you for making the brew and shaver sports podcast your go-to sports show be sure to subscribe, rate, and review our show if you haven't already. Your feedback is so important. Let us know what you think about this week's show. Send an email to brewandshavers at gmail.com or a text to our text line 318-390-3599. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you again for listening to the Brew and Shavers Sports Podcast. 
See you next week.